Hi guys! So this is the final episode for our series in the job scheduling technique. So in today's discussion, so this is Palmer's heuristics or Palmer's rule or Palmer's algorithm. Okay? So to define Palmer's heuristics, so this, so this is used if the Johnson's condition is not met for three machines and n jobs. And, syempre, this is used for multiple machines and multiple jobs. So, if you have four machines, five machines, automatically, that is under Palmer's heuristics or Palmer's rule. Okay? So, we have the following procedures. First is to assign weight for each machine. So, take note that this uh, the weights should be symmetrical. So, parang mirror lang siya. So, that is composed of a negative, a zero, and a positive. Now, example, so if the machines are odd, so you can use negative 2, 0, or positive 2. So, basta kailangan mirror siya. So, if you want, pwede naman siyang negative 3, 0, positive 3, negative 1, 0, positive 1. So, as long as equal yung uh, weight on the other or on each side. Now, if the machines are even, so we can use negative 2, negative 1, positive 1, positive 2. So, kasi tayo pag pwede maglagay ng 0 sa gitna kasi even nga eh. So, you can use negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3 if there are 6 machines. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, if odd yung number ng machine, so you can include 0. Pero if even, so it's impossible to include zero. Alright? So, second step is to get the weighted sum for each job. So, uh, using the weights we have assigned for each machine. So, that is the weighted sum. So, yung processing time for uh, machine 1 multiplied by the weight of uh, the fir or the first weight plus yung processing time ni machine 2 times the second weight plus yung processing time ni machine 3 times the third weight. So, third is to sequence jobs in descending order of the weighted sum. So, the sequence daw uh, in Palmer's heuristics is determined by the descending order of the weighted sum we have computed. Fourth is to compute for the make span and the idle time. So, yung usual method na ginagawa natin. And meron tayong i-introduce na another or panibagong procedure. So, which is to test for the correctness using lower bound. So, itong lower bound, this is the, kumbaga, simpler way of checking the optimal value. So, we have this uh, much more uh, advanced technique, which is yung branch and bound. Pero, this uh, video is only limited to the lower bound technique for our optimality uh, test. Okay? So, for an example, so we have four jobs, A, B, C, and D. And again, we have three machines. Pero dahil three machines lang ito, so we have to first test for the Johnson condition. Okay? So, just to be sure. So, again, Johnson's condition is maximum processing time kay machine 2. So, we can see that this is 98. Minimum kay 1 is 1. And the minimum in 3 or machine 3 is 81. So, again, we can see that this is not satisfied. So, we cannot use the extended Johnson's algorithm which gives us the uh, decision to just use the Palmer's rule or Palmer's heuristics. Now, for our example, again, we are going to assign symmetrical weights of negative and positive numbers. So, we just use negative 2, 0, and positive 2. So, for our weighted sum, so it's simply 77 times negative 2 plus 11 times 0 plus 82 times 2. So, the weighted sum is 10. So, again, using the following formula, so we'll just uh, arrive with the following weighted sums. So, that's negative 52. Then, for the following jobs, we have negative 116 and 16. So, we are to sequence based on the descending order of the weighted sum that we have computed. 
So therefore, the sequence of this job is D, A, B, and C. So it is a sequence based on Palmer's heuristics. So once we have completed the sequence, so the next step is to compute for the make span and the idle time of the sequence. So again, we're writing our job flow, so DABC for the three machines. So same procedure for computing for the make span. So we have 1 plus 98, well that's 99. Then 99 plus 9, so we have 108. Then for job A, so we have 1 plus 77, that's 78. Again, comparing the two, which is larger, so 99. So 99 plus 11, that's 110. Again, compare the two, 110 versus 108. So 110 plus 82 will give us 192. For job B, we have 78 plus 34. That's 112. Then again, comparing the two, 112 will be chosen. Plus 92, that's 204. Then 204 and 192 compared. So 204 will be chosen. Plus 8, so that's 212. Lastly, for job C, that's 112 plus 88, that's 200. Again, compare the two, 200 and 204. So 204 plus 36 is 240. Then finally, 240 and 212, that's 240 plus 30. We have a total of 270 units. So therefore, the span time or the make span of this job sequence is 270. And again, for the idle time, so we choose the first two numbers. That's 1 and 99. And then again, scanning for the diagonal values. So we have 112 and 110. So the idle time here is 2. Then we also have 110 and 108 on the other column. That's also 2. Then 204 and 192 is 12. And lastly, 240 and 212, that's 28. So in conclusion, your make span is 270 units. Your idle time is 1 plus 99 plus 2 plus 2 plus 12 and plus 28. That gives us a total of 144 units for our idle time. So the next step, once we have completed for the make span and the idle time, is to check how far is our heuristic value from the optimal value. So we use your lower bound method. So we have the following applicable formula for the three machines. So for the first lower bound for the first machine, so the formula here is the sum of all the process time in machine 1 plus the minimum sum between uh, the, the processing time of machine 2 and machine 3. Then for the second lower bound value for machine 2, so we use the uh, minimum processing time in machine 1 plus the summation of all processing times in machine 2 then plus the minimum processing time in machine 3. Finally, for the third lower bound value, so we get the minimum sum between processing time of machine 1 and 2 plus the summation of all the processing time of machine 3. So the lower bound value will be the maximum between LB1, 2, and 3. Then for the percentage error, so we compute it using the formula H minus L all over L then multiplied by 100. So where H is the heuristic value that we have attained or computed using Palmer's uh, rule, and then yung L naman is the lower bound value. Okay, so lower bound. So again, we have to get first the sum of all uh, the processing time for each machine. So that's 200 for machine 1, 237 for machine 2, and 129 for machine 3. So the first lower bound value, so we have the summation of machine 1, which is 200, plus the minimum between the sum of uh, machine 2 and 3. So that will give us 93, 
66 and 107 so we get the value of 266 for the value of the lower bound for machine 1 for the second lower bound value naman so we get the minimum value among the first columns which is 1 plus the sum of all processing time in machine 2 plus the minimum value on the third machine which is 8 so the value is 246 then for the third lower bound value so we get the minimum sum between machines 1 and 2 so that's 88 126 124 and 99 plus the sum of machine 3 which is 129 so the lower bound for the third machine is 217 so getting the maximum value between the three values so the lower bound value is 266 so this is the l value from the uh, percentage error formula we have earlier so for the percentage error so we have 270 minus 266 all over 266 then you multiply by 100% so that will give us an error of 1.5% from the target value. So, kasi mas malaki yung ating heuristic value from the lower bound uh, value for the total make span. So, clearly, the heuristic approach is, uh, is, ano naman, is acceptable since it has lower error. And that gives us the end of this series for the job scheduling technique. So again, for more videos, so kindly subscribe to the channel and don't forget to like and share to your fellow IE so we can share information especially for our upcoming Certified Industrial Engineering examination. Okay, so if again you have questions, comments, or video suggestions, recommendations, so just comment it down below and I'll try to get back on you guys so again thank you for watching bye